One of the most intriguing stories in recent years was the mysterious attack on U.S. Embassy personnel in Cuba by what many believe was a secret and possibly sonic weapon. The U.S. investigation is ongoing and the government remains tight-lipped. But correspondent Mariana Venzeller took a hard look at the science and what she found paints a very unusual picture of these supposed attacks. We're getting new information regarding attacks in Cuba on U.S. and Canadian diplomats. We know for a fact that our diplomats were injured. We don't know who or what is responsible for it. What was your reaction when you first heard of these attacks? We were taken aback. We didn't know what to think. The State Department started saying they had all of these reports that people were getting ill. Josh Letterman was one of the first to report on this alarming and bizarre incident. A total of 24 embassy staffers or their partners fell ill after hearing strange sounds while in separate hotel rooms or homes. A secret source leaked a recording of the sound to the Associated Press. The file has been stripped of any metadata that might compromise the identity of the informant. We reviewed several recordings of the sound that were taken by people in Havana. And what you hear is this sound in pulses some of them for seven seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, and sometimes pauses, 30 seconds of silence, and then it would start again, and then it would stop. Can you list to us some of the symptoms that they say they were feeling? Headaches, nausea, uh, ringing in the ears, permanent hearing loss, vision problems, problems with concentration, with memory, with word recall, uh, and uh, a lot of other symptoms that are considered nonspecific. They thought it could have something to do with a sonic weapon of some sort. It was like out of a science fiction movie. But what kind of sound would cause nausea, hearing loss, and memory problems? I'm in uh, Watertown, Massachusetts, and I'm here to meet Joe Pompey. He's the founder of a company called Holosonics. Joe Pompey specializes in highly advanced sonic devices. We hoped he could shed some light on how the reported sound caused the victim's injuries, but his conclusion only deepens the mystery. The sound can't create these physiological problems that have been reported. Why, why is it impossible for sound to create these problems? When sound waves go through air and hit a body, they bounce right off. 99.99% of the energy reflects. There's no way to penetrate the body with sound waves to create any of these physiological problems that have been reported, regardless of power levels. So it's absolutely not possible. There's no refuting it uh, from a scientific basis. This can't possibly be sound. The identities of the embassy staff have been kept secret. But despite what noises they may have heard in Cuba, it wasn't the sound that made them sick. That means the only other clues to this mystery lie in the symptoms themselves. We've just been granted permission to talk to the doctors who have been leading the medical investigation into the attacks in Cuba. So we're heading to the University of Pennsylvania's campus. Solving the mystery is in the hands of Dr. Douglas Smith, who was tapped by the State Department to examine the embassy staff and diagnose the cause of their injuries. This is his first television interview about the case. So what did you find? Initially, we did an ear, nose, and throat workup uh, because there's a reports of sound, and people said that hearing problems, so that was the focus. Mm -hmm. But it became clear that people started having these types of changes that were really more with cognition, really, mm -hmm. how quickly they think, their memory, their attention span. When the group of us got together, we just kind of brought up, so what do you think this is? And everybody said, this looks like persistent concussion. Dr. Smith says concussion explains many of the reported symptoms, such as headaches and problems with memory and vision. 
But this is also a very radical theory for the simple fact that it's impossible to get concussions without a head injury. Everybody was kind of skeptical. There's no history of head impact. So somebody's describing concussion. We, we've never heard of anything like this. This was, we kind of joke that this is immaculate concussion. I suspect that it is mechanical in origin, just like concussion's mechanical, but it's imparted in a completely different way than happens in concussion. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of environmental exposure that cause these symptoms. We don't know what that is.